All right, y'all take a deep breath. I always like to start with an intention setting. Um, you are in the prosperous office, free Zoom at noon today. I'm so glad to see y'all here. Thank you for taking the time um, out of your day, your week, your month. I know it's busy um, to come learn some things and I'm excited because I got some nice information on my walk this morning for this class and it, it's going to be an interesting class, I think. So um, I always like to start by setting an intention by lighting a candle because as you know, in feng shui, that fire energy is wonderful for setting intentions. So <clears throat> y'all take your deepest breath. You've taken all month of May. Setting an intention for an amazing call today where you receive the information you're wanting. I just ask that I be a clear communicator. So y'all just take a moment to feel yourself a little more receptive, a little more open, a little more relaxed, okay? Just feel yourself in this present moment and with your next breath, just say in your mind, be here now. And do that a couple more times, be here now. Feel yourself getting a little heavier in your chair. Feel any tension falling away from you. Maybe put your attention on your heart area, that beautiful light that resides in your heart. Just give it some love and attention. And give yourself a lot of credit for being here. Give yourself some appreciation for showing up today and wanting to know more about this amazing art and science and therefore wanting to know more about yourself because that's kind of at the heart of feng shui. Okay, one more deepest breath. And I, I like to call on spirit guides and angels. So I'm gonna call on my, my spirit guides and your spirit guides to facilitate today's call. Even if you're listening to the recording, they can, um, they don't have limitations of time and space. So, and I'll also call on the ancient feng shui masters to also um, be present and uh, guide us. Okay. All right, let's do this. I also got the little nudge to call or acknowledge anyway, Abraham of Abraham Hicks. Um, I'm a big law of attraction fan. If you are new to me, uh, we will be discussing some of that today too. All right. Hey y'all. Woo, woo, woo. Good to see y'all. Yay. So glad you're here. Let's talk about the prosperous office. I'm just going to jump in with my PowerPoint and, um, and I am going to set another intention that our timing is perfect and elegant always. Um, and that we have plenty of time to get to your questions. And you are going to just walk away from here knowing more about feng shui and know about more about your own space. And I love the idea of DIY. Hey, Amber. See, Amber is already putting her things in the chat. Y'all can put in the chat where you're calling in from. I want to know, actually because some of y'all are new to my Zoom at names. Um, just say where you are um, and uh, anything else you want to say to everybody. It's May, y'all. Such a beautiful, beautiful month here in Birmingham. I'm, I'm in Birmingham, Alabama, for those of y'all. And I'm Katie Rogers. Um, and I have a website called Katie Rogers Feng Shui and windhorseschool.com. So y'all can find out more about me um, if you haven't already uh gone to those places. All right. So I am so excited that this is the third in our series. This was our spring series. Um, we have a free Zoom at noon every month. We will skip a couple of months in the summer, but we are going to do June. Um, but this is the third in our money series. Okay. And we did the Prosperous Kitchen and we did uh, the Prosperous Front Door. So these are three aspects of your home that can show you what your relationship is with money. Um, that is, again, the heart of feng shui, <laughs> showing you something about yourself. <laughs> so um, yay. Oh, good. Oh, good. Ooh, Iowa. Awesome. LA, baby. And um, San Diego and Sedona. Yep, yep, yep. Fairfield, Connecticut. Love it. Virginia, y'all, isn't it so cool that we can do this and be from everywhere? I love it. Thank y'all for typing that in. 
Um, all right. So just because sometimes I get so excited talking to y'all, I forget to tell y'all what's going on. <laughs> I'm just starting with that. So declutter, y'all know, love it. Every January we do a declutter jamboree. It used to be called declutter your way to clarity. I've called it make space for grace. All those names still apply. I love all those names, but lately I've been calling it the Declutter Jamboree. And every January, we have a group declutter to prepare for Chinese New Year. Okay. But I also like to keep talking about it because it's so important in feng shui. And I have not read The Gentle Art of Swedish Death Cleaning. I've read articles. I've gotten myself acquainted with it, but I haven't read the book. So we're going to have a book club. That's our free Zoom at noon next month. So y'all read the book or you do not have to read the book to show up, please just show up because it will just be a discussion, okay, about clutter and with maybe a focus on this concept of how to do it. I'm excited to read this book. And then y'all, I've opened up my feng shui and the energetics of money e-course for the first few weeks of May. Um, go ahead and sign up if you haven't, if you're, if you like this class today, um, I cover so much in this nine day course, you will have those emails forever. Um, money is such a big topic in feng shui. Um, and I mean, I could do a whole year <laughs> or five free Zoom at noons on money. We're really good because that's how much it shows up in our space. And also, um, as everybody knows, it's an important aspect of our lives, right? So, um, the nine day course is packed and really, I really have fun writing it. So if you're interested, I always set an intention Anytime anybody pays me for my services, y'all, I, I I believe in this art and science so much, not just because I believe in it, because I've seen people get results. And I always say, may the abundance return to you tenfold and more. So if you purchase something from me, that is embedded anytime you pay me for something, because um, uh, that's the only way I could honestly do this work is if it worked. <laughs> So y'all get that, okay? So sign up if you feel called to it. And then of course, every, um, I do a nine month odyssey, but y'all y'all probably know about that already. You can read about it on windhorseschool.com. All right, yay. All right, I'm so excited. Before we keep going, um, if, who put in the chat or raise your hand, who came to the Midas Touch with the International Feng Shui Guild? I gave a talk called the, yay, 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 yay. I love seeing y'all there. Um, I had so much fun with that one. I like playing with mythology. Yay. Um, on the call, if you were, you got on my email list for the first time, you were set for a free color reading. This is something I don't really do for people that aren't in the Odyssey anymore, but I felt inspired to it because I'm kind of in the background working on a book on color. It's an ebook, I think. Um, and this color reading is a is just, I'm not going to tell you all much more about it. I'll put it in an email, but I'm going to draw right now the winner. Y'all ready? I have a bunch of pieces of paper I'm shuffling. All right, who's going to be? Here it is. Okay, it's an email that says A-K-S-A-R-A-I. If you are here, put it yourself in the chat. If you're not here, you will watch this video and see that you got drawn. And then I also put, I'll send this person an email. Okay, yay! Whoever won it, I'm excited. All right, I love the color ratings. All right. Okay, let's let's get into this. Well, I have a whole spiel before I begin. We'll leave this slide up there for y'all. Okay, so this is, remember how I told y'all, some of y'all weren't on yet, but this morning I went on a walk like I usually do with my dog. And I, I like to basically tune in <laughs> to y'all and see what wants to come up. And um, uh, so... I want to make a blanket statement about feng shui, kind of like to, as a conclusion of our series, right? In a way um, that I say in so many ways all the time, but today it came in a little differently. So I wrote it down. So I'm probably going to look at my notes as well as talk to y'all. Um, the first thing I did right though, is what drew y'all to this class today? What drew y'all to this class today? Write it down either in a journal or if you want, I would I would love to see it if you feel like you want to in the chat. What? Why are you here? I want to know why you're here. And for some reason, I think it's important for you to focus on why you're here. This is a little bit of a, a intention setting for the class. So we can set intentions as individuals and a collective, right? 
Um, why are you here? What are you hoping to gain today? What are you hoping to gain today? What do you want to learn? What drew you to this class today on Prosperous Office? Okay, and it can be something general. Or it can be specific, or maybe you don't even know why. You're like, I just got to show up. I have time. Or maybe you just saw the email and you're like, ooh, I have time. Whatever it is, see if you can, and if you need to dig a little bit on why you think you're here, then have at it. But write it down somewhere. Okay. Great. Yay. Love it. I love that I got Anne's more general and Elizabeth more specific. Whatever it is, it is. Ah, yay, Joelle. <laughs> yay, yay, yes. Learn anything and everything about Feng Shui, right? It's so much fun. That's why. All right. Can you can feel free to write this. Oh, Cheryl, I love it. Yay. I'm happy you're here. Um, great. Answer the call, right? Um, so here's my blanket statement about Feng Shui. Um, I, I give these classes, right? I offer these cures is what they're called or adjustments in Feng Shui. Um, basically, now that you're starting or you're way down the path with your studies with feng shui or your career with feng shui, so we do have some wonderful certified people here. Um, you pretty much anytime you make a change in your home with intention, it's a cure. Like you now, you can't go back. <laughs> you know feng shui even a little bit, and anything you do is um, is I mean really a cure, right? So um, you can read the books, you can come to these classes and I'll, you know, I like to get specific and play with y'all on what you have going on. But, um, you know, what I give in these slideshows, a lot of it's just like the basics, the foundation, right? Um, some things you can get out of a book and then you can go do it and see what happens. But today I really wanted to remind y'all um, and maybe it's a reminding of myself because I have been doing this for such a long time and um, sometimes I get comfortable, right? Sometimes we get a little comfortable with our, our what we've studied and, and in my case, I'm teaching. Um, so whether you're moving your desk, which some of y'all might end up doing after this call today, or painting a wall, or even a feng shui cure can be lighting a candle. You can have very simple cures. I mean, decluttering your office drawer is a is a cure in a lot of ways. It's a, it's a what you're doing is you're setting your energy field to a different frequency. Okay, so this is some of the laws of attraction stuff, and this is where feng shui and LA, LOA I call it meet. Um, so basically, what we're all walking around balls of energy, we're chi, right? And we have frequencies that attract our experiences and people and money and everything else to us. We're always attracting. So what this work does is gets us to a place where we want to attract like the best stuff, <laughs> the stuff that makes us the most happy, basically. Or I don't, that's not even, well, it's not even, that's not even the best way to say it because I teach unconditional happiness too. But um we just all want fun and easy lives and we can have it, right? And our frequency is basically letting us know how open we are to that, okay? So now here's here's where I'm going. Y'all have all heard that. I think all y'all have heard that from me at some point. I probably put it in every email in some way. Um, when you do a cure, move your desk, it's like you're setting your you're in a, you're, it's like you're setting a different trajectory for your life in a way. So I just, I just want y'all to remember, like, sometimes when people do these cures, it's like, whoa, they call me in 10 minutes. They're like, Katie, you're not gonna, somebody just called me and offered me a little, you know, it's like very exciting. Like the energy just moves super fast and it's done and they see the results fast. Right. Um, and then sometimes it's like, whoa, 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 like things are a little odd. Like I don't usually come out and say this, but with this group, I'm saying it. Like sometimes it can feel bumpy, right? Just for just for a time. Clarity is sometimes, you know what? I'm getting the understanding. Um, So in 2020, I decided to get prescription sunglasses because I have, I've had astigmatism and um, nearsightedness since I was like seventh grade. 
but I would wear those glasses and I just, whatever, I, it felt like the floor was falling out and I never, I never had to wear them really. My eyesight is pretty good still and still and was, but I knew I wanted to see distances better. And plus I thought it was kind of fun to get glasses in 2020 representing seeing clearly in my life. Right. <clears throat> and y'all my brain, when I would wear those sunglasses, it was like, it, it, the neurological pathways were having to rewire. Okay. Um, same. So I have an aunt who's been, she was born mostly deaf. Um, she can speak and she can hear enough to hear the words, but you know, she has um, a lisp or I don't even know if that's the right term, but um, with modern science, they gave her something so that she could hear better. Um, and they have to, there's like something you have to do where you have to train your brain. She couldn't understand what rain was. She could see it, but she couldn't understand what the noise was. So I didn't know I was going to be talking about this today like that. <laughs> that just came to me. But there's something about, I want y'all to understand, and this is a little bit advanced for those of y'all new to feng shui, but I've got some major advanced people here too that are calling this information forth, I feel like. But whatever, y'all are here. So you're wanting it, whether you're new or not. Um, sometimes when you put a cure in, it can feel a little bit like, whoa, I, I, I don't know what's really happening. Now, this is not nor the norm, honestly. Like a lot of times people just put the cure in. It's like, oh my gosh, my house feels better. Yay, I'm so excited. And then it's a done deal, right? And then they like see results. But there are times, I want y'all to be aware there are times when you're setting your frequency to a different level that there can be a little bit of bump in the road. Okay. It's like, I, I think I gave you, I think I gave you all what you needed. Abraham Hicks talks about this too. They talk about like when you're in, a, when you're in a road and you're going over bumps. Okay. Like you're going over bumps, but when you're in an airplane and you hit an air pocket, it's like that. Because your energy is fat, the energy is faster. It's a faster thing. So you feel the smaller things in a bigger way. But this is a good thing. I want y'all to know this is a good thing. This is a good thing because you can um, learn to navigate that faster, higher frequency better. Oh my gosh, that was big. Did y'all take that in? I need a thumb up or something in the chat that says, okay, holy cow, yay. Way to start the class. <laughs> Because that was big for me, actually. Um, <clears throat> so again, okay, so here's the deal with feng shui. So when I'm talking about all this, uh, that y'all are going to get all this desk position and everything today. Oh, Selena, you know. Okay, awesome. Okay. Cosmic. Message from the cosmic wood dragon. I tell you what. Mm -hmm. The dragon is not playing. I mean, it's playing, but it's like, yeah, this is a dragon year. This is what Joelle's referring to. So um, I did write down with a star. Feng Shui will help you see what frequency you're putting out there. So if, so my favorite, the easiest way to explain this is um, my clients that come to me as single women and um, they want to be in a relationship and I go into their home and they have several portraits, pictures, artwork of single either single women or a single cat, whatever it is, <laughs> okay? <laughs> whatever it is, it's single. And I explain like we need things in pairs to represent romance, especially in your romance gua. And gua is as one of the sections of the Bagua map that we lay over a floor plan. And um, so, you know, that's what they do. They, they realize they're putting out a frequency of single because it's it's reinforced in their space, all right? Now, that was me just throwing something. If you have a portrait of a single person in, in your self-knowledge, then you're cool. So I'm just, I'm giving y'all a lot. Y'all are ready. All right, all right, let me just see what else I wrote and then we're gonna move on. Are you putting out, okay, so now I brought it back to the successful office, the prosperous office. So are you putting out the I'm capable and great at this job vibe? Or are you putting out, I mean, I just made this up. I'm in this for the salary vibe, okay? I kind of in my head when I write this down, like thinking of somebody like applying for a job, like, are you putting out that vibe? Your office can show me that. 
and show the certified consultants here that. We can see what vibe you're sending out by how your space is organized, the colors, the patterns. I mean, it's crazy. It sounds crazy, <laughs> but we can. <laughs> but that's not what we're looking for. We're not looking for what's wrong. We're looking for how to get you what you want. We're looking for how to help you get that, like get into that pattern of what you want, all right? And by default, we see all that, all right? So we're here to help you be happy. <laughs> And have, a, and have better clarity on your life, all right? So, and again, I did write, are you putting out the I'm single vibe or are you putting out the I know my worth vibe and I'm worthy of abundance in all forms, okay? That can include friendships, romances, experiences, and of course, money. And then I put, or is there something in your space that represents the victim vibe, right? Like there's, anyway, vibe is such a California word. I love saying it. I remember when I moved back to Alabama, <laughs> reference like, vibe, vibe. You say that all the time. I'm like, I do. It's just normal in California, but Alabama's picked it up now. All right. Oh my gosh, I have more on this. When you put a cure in place properly, you set a dial to a different frequency. This can sometimes bring things to you like magic, but this can also sometimes feel really bumpy. The, res the What happens is the resistance to that thing that you want becomes noticeable. That's why it feels bumpy. So to put in a cure to make these changes is living a life of truth. This is my favorite part. I just have to say, I was really kind of, sometimes I get like, wow, the people that are discovering feng shui, studying feng shui, what you're wanting is a life of truth. Okay. And I, think that is the most beautiful thing on the planet for people to want to see themselves truthfully, um, their situations truthfully. Um, it's, it's the noble life I wrote. You're wanting something better for yourself and I'm going to cry. And usually the whole world benefits from this y'all. So if you are doing this work, it, it, it has a ripple effect. Okay. Mm, I love it. So I offer you these cures with a word of understanding of what is actually happening. And then also a word of respect for feng shui. So um, it's a powerful, powerful art. So just know this. Okay. And um, honor yourself for being here and honor yourself for the process and honor, honor yourself and, and for wanting to be um, understanding and open to this work. Oh my God. Y'all, I don't usually get so sentimental like this. I like to keep it real playful, but this is what was happening this morning. <laughs> so I followed the guidance. All right. Let's talk about offices. Keeping up with time. Remember in feng shui, we look at space symbolically. So you want a stable career in finances. Everybody says wants stability, right? We want stability. You want to be supported. You want to be in command. You want to have some command. You want to feel like you have some control over what you're doing, right? Like you want to feel empowered in your career, right? In your um, uh, relationship with money. You want to feel like you know what you're doing, <laughs> okay? That's all command means. <laughs> um I feel like women sometimes shy away from this empowerment and command stuff, but that's not what we're doing here, okay? Um, and you want to be focused. You want focus. Focus is huge. Focus is everything. So we want to set up an office for you where these things are met, okay? I'm going to write them all down. Those are so good. Stability. I'm writing them down too because I want to have them in front of me the whole time we're talking. Supported, command, and focus, Okay. Am I missing anything? I'm asking my pros here today. We'll find out. Y'all can, y'all know who you are and you can say what you want. All right. So let's start basic. All right. So command position. So here's the door to the room. All right. The command position basically means you're sitting at a desk and you can see the door from your desk. Okay. Now. You'd be surprised how hard this sometimes is to set up in a space, okay? With windows and size of desks and other stuff in the room and everything else. But, you know, this is a nice 
way to do it is very straightforward. You have command, okay? Oh, and look, your back is supported by a wall. Ta-da, that's so easy. Look, see, I've got a wall. Yay. Um, and I have command, I see, and I actually have a window there, so I see um, people as they drive up to my house, et cetera. So I kind of have double command. All right, and even this, still, you can see who's coming in, right? All right, back supported. All right, great, easy. Um, I could have put up probably four or five more slides on desk arrangement, but I just want y'all to know this. Like, let's just go away with this today. All right. And then we'll probably have, we'll see what comes up as we keep going. All right. We're going to just look at some offices. Okay. I pulled this one offline. Um, yes or no, are they in command? Is this person in command? No, they are not. Their bag is exposed. Now, of course, it's nice to look outside. I love looking outside myself, but whew. now if this desk was moved and this wall was behind them, this plant would have to go. This would feel so different. Right now, it's just exposure. So, and I'm noticing the old fashioned typewriter, that's funny. So this is, this is an easy one, even though we really don't even know where the door to this room is, we can guess that it's not, I mean, you don't have to know in this one. This person cannot see what's coming up from behind them. So the concept behind this, this is the way my awesome teacher, Sharon Stasny, she has a book on feng shui for workplaces. It's Her book's so amazing. Stasny, S-T-A-S-N-E-Y. -S um, she explained the command position to us as we all kind of have that primitive brain still and like that cave person brain. And she goes, you think the caveman would bring home the the kill from the day and, you know, the fires in the in the cave, in the middle of the cave? You think he would cook it with his back to the mouth of the cave? That is a very unsettling thing. And she would say the saber-toothed tiger would come and get him. <laughs> He's not going to keep himself exposed and vulnerable like that. OK, so with our brains, we want we want to feel safe. We want to feel OK, so. Great. All right. Yes. So the command, thank you, Selena. The command position we like to apply to the bed. We want we like to have a door, the view of the door in feng shui in your bed, the desk, and even the stove. Okay. But there's ways to cure it, and we will talk about that because sometimes you cannot move the desk around. And this one, if I went into the space, I would be picking that desk up with my client and moving that desk while I was there. This was very easy to change. And it's, it's very obvious to me where the desk could feel so much better. And so I like to kind of tease, like, look on the, you watch the movies, every CEO office, you walk in the door, like the little, you know, the hero of the story is walking in the CEO's office and the CEO is sitting there facing. I mean, that desk is big, solid. A lot of times there's a window behind them, but there's usually something to kind of anchor the energy and they're looking out at that person and man, they're in command. Like no question that little hero of the movie is walking in to the power person. Okay. So it doesn't have to be that dramatic, but it is pretty funny how you see it in every single movie. You are not going to have, I, I can't even stress it. Actually, you can't, you're not going to have that character walking in and the CEO's back is to the door. Ever. Have you ever seen it? If y'all find that, please email me. I want to see that scene. It's not going to happen. <laughs> All right. So here's a picture of a, I just decided to give y'all a lot of different options. This is a workplace. Now we have these modern workplaces where um, people come in and they share the tables, right? So, I mean, we are in modern times where people work at home a lot, right? This saves the company money not to have these huge offices where people can come in and share. But I would, if this was my client, like if the boss called me for this office setup, I would have some major big talks with the boss to find out exactly what was going on at this company. I mean, I would get to the bottom of it. Uh, I would imagine there would be people that were probably pretty transient, like they couldn't keep their employees very well. 
Um, there's just certain things you can do. And you, that doesn't mean you have to go, you know, get everybody their own office. But there would be certain things I would do energetically to um, to help everybody feel uh, a little bit more. I don't know. Not trans. I keep thinking transient in this career, in this in this office space. But I would have to do some research on this one. I would have to. This would be to the client, to the business, and it would be very interesting. I think it would be a lot of fun. Um. But y'all see, and I have more to say about this, but another slide I think is going to help me demonstrate it better. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk about the conference room. I love conference rooms. <laughs> I love them, especially because there's a lot of times there's round tables, <laughs> these tables with curved corners. It's really nice. And um, I just think this picture is lovely. Um, I think you can tell that there is a certain form of communication here, um, but Okay, so this is the fun part. Um, there are certain people out of command, it, it might seem, and certain people in command, right? So there's certain people in this room that have a view of the door and certain people that don't. And um, that is okay. That is okay. Unless you are in charge of the meeting, you do not have to be in command, okay? Like, it is okay to be in a space and not be in command. I tell my, um, I've had some teachers come to me and ask me to punctuate their classroom. And sure enough, I mean, they, they were like, we have, I have a rowdy classroom. Well, the teacher is hardly ever in command. She has given her students the view of the door and not herself. So what that, what that does, so students feel safer if they know the teacher has some control and command, okay? There, there is an hierarchy in certain situations that, I, that, that um, will draw respect, okay? So I just wanna imagine, I mean, in this picture, there is, she seems to, she feels the most in command, but maybe because all eyes are on her, right? Um, but I would hope in this situation, the boss of the company or the boss of this sat in command, okay? So if you have a presentation or something where you feel like you need to make sure you're heard, try to sit in the command position, okay? Or angle your chair so at least you have a view of the door. Or when you get up, like angle your body so you have the view of the door. Ooh, so good. All right, here's another office. I'm kind of like flip-flopping around, but I'm going to just give y'all some stuff and then we'll have some Q&A. All right. What do y'all think? Are they in command? Yep, they're in command. Do you like this office? Mm -hmm. Yep. Joelle says yes. Ann says mm. yep. It's it's definitely got um, uh, expression in it. So I like that. Um but it might not be everybody's expression, right? Um, it's nice to see some color. Um, there is a wall behind this person. Uh, there's intention here. This is almost a mountain. So mountains behind a person when they're sitting are kind of a classic feng shui thing, um, but a wall can be a mountain, right? So we, we, can, we can just say, you know what? We've got that solid. Mountains represent that solid. So um, what do y'all think? Y'all think that's more trees or mountains? You think trees? I saw you nailed it. I think so too. I might just I might just double double check and and say, I don't know. I gotta think about this one. It sure is nice intention here. Yeah, a little of both, maybe, Ann. Yeah, something about the triangles. Okay, so um, that person's in command. We, we can't deny it, right? I think this person likes their job. Do you? Do y'all think this person likes their job? They sure did put a lot of intention into the space. I think that would, I think that would reflect like, wow, you you want to be in here. You like sitting here. You you have created a space that 
feels good to you while you're working. I mean, we do spend a lot of time working, right? So um, I'm, I'm, I'm liking it. Again, y'all saw my email. I, um, it's to the client always. So I would have to talk to this person and just ask them, how's, how's your career? How's your mind? Just to make sure I'm not missing a little nuance, right? I would look at the titles of the books. I would do it all, basically. <laughs> make sure that clock is set to the right time. You'd be amazed how many times I see that. Okay. All right, now here we have another office. This is just a little glimpse, and I think the way I did the slide made it kind of zoom in a little bit, but um, what do y'all think? Do y'all think this person is in command or not? Okay, they're not. There's no way they are. There might be a door to the side. So a peripheral can count as command. Basically, if you can see the motion, it counts. But now some feng shui consultants say when you have your desk up against a wall like that and you're just looking at a wall, it can block opportunities. You want a little bit of visual, like a little bit of a um, longer perspective in front of you. Now, if this is their only choice, like in a dorm room or something, I would get some kind of picture to put above there that maybe had some kind of view or something that was really um, just a good vibration, a, a good chi in front of them, maybe that felt like a window or something. Um, you know, something that had good chi, all right? And then also I would maybe get them to put a little mirror or something on their desk that gives them a view of what is behind them. So that is how we cure desks that are, we're not, I mean, y'all, some of these dorms, I, know when I was young, they were nailed in the desk. Do y'all remember that? They're like screwed into the wall, I think. You could not move those. So they're, we feng shui consultants have figured out lots of options for people and they work because intention goes a long way. They really do work. Those little mirrors, I have felt them shift the whole energy of our room because you're saying, no, I want some control here. <laughs> you know, I want some, I want to feel empowered in my work and in what I'm doing in my life. All right, this one was funny to me because of some kind of um, virtual reality thing. <laughs> okay. And are they drawing a shoe? <laughs> Y'all follow Anne Bray, Anne M. Bray because she draws shoes and they're gorgeous and amazing. But I think that is so funny that that happened to be here. Okay, now this office has a lot going on. Obviously, we've got these fluorescent lights. <laughs> At least it's a high ceiling. There looks like there is some kind of natural light coming in. Thank goodness from this perspective at least um here we have one of these kind of setups where there's a lot of people in there i mean i was hired to um do the interior decorating for a loft space here in birmingham for a nonprofit, and they were like no we have to have these desks because really the people are in and out all the time and they were like four or five offices so the, for the people that are, are in the office more. So I did have to work with these situations and just kind of trust that like that transient feel is okay for certain situations. Um, but again, I would do some pretty deep, deep digging um, and make sure um, these employees felt supported. Again, though, you know, if you don't have command, but you know, you have your coworker right working right here that you actually adore and that always seems to have your back and like y'all are just great coworkers. Um, if she's not in command, let's say the main door was there, but this person was working here a lot, guess what? You, if you trust that person, they're holding the command energy for you. Like they're not taking it away from you. You just have somebody who has your back looking. It's kind of like the teacher thing. It's like, you don't have to be sitting or the boss thing. You don't have to be sitting. Now, if, if that person and you had some conflict and there was a power struggle, you might want to go sit on the other side next to them instead of across, right? Or something. So that that's a, this is a whole thing, this kind of layout. Okay, now we got, again, that kind of zoomed down, but y'all get the idea. I wish, does it show the chair? Now here, I don't see the, yeah, there it is. Okay, good. The desk chair is in the corner. Okay, 
how do y'all feel about this office? What do y'all think? Some so-sos in there? So-sos? Okay. So this office is interesting to me because it's so different than last one, number one. <laughs> Um, there's definitely some earthy energy. So you start to see, when you see slides next to each other, you start to see like just the different elements. This one has an earth element. There's lots of softer neutrals, um, heavier items. Um, um, and it does feel like, I don't know what kind of work would be going on here. It feels a little bit more of an artist kind of space to me or like a journaling or writing, right? Um, I would still, I don't know if I would move the dust. They've got this beautiful view. Um, there's definitely intention here, right? Um, but I would definitely give this person a mirror always, just no matter what, why not? Okay. And I would talk to them about what they want to do here, right? Um, yes. Leslie says, love this because of the window, the yard feels very cozy and comforting. Yeah, it has a totally different feel. There's a nurturing. So the earth element represents the nurturing element. So there's something. So your office can depend on what you do for a living. Okay. This would not work for some jobs. <laughs> it just would be too uh, soft. Right. There's some jobs where you need a little more. Go, go get them. So. Um, isn't this fun? I love it. Do y'all. OK, we only have a few more and then we get to chat. And then here's a lady sitting at her desk. What do y'all think? Yep. Yep. Oh, I see some nods. Yay. 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 I liked it, too. Yes. Yes. Everybody likes it. Me, too, y'all. There's something interesting about this bookcase because she has this solid part of it behind her. But then it's also, there's something about this bookcase. I like it. Um, she's got the desk. Oh, I meant to say in that first slide. Let me just run back to it. This first slide, I would get this person a new desk so fast. This does not feel stable to me at all. That feels like that's going to collapse. Okay. So, this office is pretty good. Of course, we have this little kind of desk sneaked in here too. That's not in command, but this looks like the main desk. But this, what desk you have does say a lot about what is going on with you, okay, in your career, all right? So make sure you have something that is supportive, that supports you, okay? Now, it's funny because I'm like, this is the same kind of desk, but this doesn't feel like that rickety to me. Um. I still might, I, what I do is I just point it out. I'm like, look, this is the feng shui principles, you know, and I would probably test the desk out. And if it shook, <laughs> that is going, okay? We're just, that person's got to invest in a desk, all right? Um, yeah, Amber. Oh, I love that comment, Amber. Okay, so. the desk being hard, dark helps. I think so too. Something about having a, that color makes it not feel so flimsy. Isn't that interesting? I don't know. I, I agree, Anne. Um, okay, but she's in command. She's totally in command. <laughs> I don't think we can deny that. I think this picture rocks. Um, but again, and and I, I she looks like she has a, an, an interesting career because there's like an artistic element. There's like a little, the Buddha, a little spiritual element. Um, she's organized, right? Yep. Um, okay. I think that might be the last one. So I'm going to stop share, even knowing I can go back to any picture y'all want to discuss. Yay. I love seeing all y'all here. I'm going to look at some of these um, comments right now. Um, let me go backwards. So Amber said, I like the bookcase has a glass to hold all the items in. There's a safety feeling so things can't fall on you. Okay, this is a wonderful comment. And I'm so glad you brought it up, Amber, because um, last night I was having um, dinner with a small group of ladies. And um, one of them was the neighbor of a friend of mine who her husband hired me to come do his home office. <laughs> He's very open-minded and great client. And she goes, he told me 
what you did in there. And now, and y'all, this was a little while back. I usually remember almost, I, I feel like I remember things about my clients, but I kind of did forget this. And then I came back as soon as she said it. She's like, his desk was underneath these shelves that weren't built. You know, they were put in the wall, but they weren't. And he had like, I'm not even getting, he had, he's very loves to collect magazines. Okay. And um, those magazines were like, so Amber lives in California and I used to too. And we California's know, people know, you cannot have things that feel like if an earthquake came, if that fell on you and you were going to die, that is not good feng shui. Okay. It doesn't matter if you get earthquakes where you are or not. That precarious feeling is not good feng shui. So Amber's comment on it's behind the doors. She, that woman, I can bring the slide back up if y'all want had enough space behind her, you know, and like having them glass done does have that protective feeling. Cause sometimes a bookshelf behind a person is not the best thing. It's almost too much energy behind you sometimes. So, um, but definitely shelving near your desk above you can feel real heavy and oppressive. Okay. Um, he moved that desk and was very, got it. He got it. He's like, Oh, so, um, and I think he even lightened the load on those, um, shelves as well. Like he didn't need all those magazines up there, you know, like maybe a few items that did not feel so intensely heavy. Um, okay. Amber, do you find that people don't want to move their desks because they want the window light for zoom calls? Um, I have not encountered that yet, but, um, I would probably just say the, Positioning your desk is the most important aspect of your career, according to feng shui principles, and get a ring light. <laughs> I would come up with something else if 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 their desk position was not making sense to the floor plan. Okay, great questions. Um, let's see. Said I like the warmth of the wood in the last one. Again, this is the fun part, y'all. We are all different. We all have different careers. We are all very different people. We've got people that like that sleek, industrial, clean lines, no clutter. Um, they're, they're, they're like tech in the tech field, right? And then we've got the artists that want the, the nurturing, that need the like creative space. And then we've got, um, I mean, there's too many of us, right? So you are you and you will design your office according to what supports you and your career. All right. However, there are some feng shui principles that we as consultants look for to make sure um, there's balance there. OK, and that you have those magic words, stability, support, command and focus. Oh, just made that up for this class. Stability, support, command and focus. OK. What are good colors to paint an office? I think somebody else was asking that. Callie said it. Are there colors or symbols you all absolutely always want in an office? Um, I'm just double checking everybody's things real quick. Um, no, you can, there's not anything, there's no hard rules with that. Now, there are some beliefs in some schools of feng shui, and I actually am thinking, so Grandmaster Lin Yan brought over the Tibetan Black Hat School of Feng Shui, which is the school that I practice. Um, he does have a book on color and it has all these fun things that, that you know, for a writing career, you want this and for a, such and such career, you want this and such and such. I, um, I'm a little bit more, I love those things. I'm a little bit more flexible, but I also have a deep background in color, which is why I'm writing a book. Um, like I love color. I'm really obsessed with it. And I really was in my twenties when I was studying feng shui and um, I know the meanings of colors. So I'll give you a little example. So being in um, a field where you use your voice about a lot. Okay. That could be the creative fields, um, writing, teaching. Um, blue is supposedly the color of like of speaking, right? Of um, getting a message out. So, um, and turquoise. So if you want to use that color in your space to set the intention of like, hey, this is me, this is my career, great, okay? Um, 
maybe an athlete will want a little bit of red in their office, right? Red is such a high energy color. Like athletes, it's all physicality. Um, anybody want to throw out some careers? Let's play. Let's do it like that. Ann said moving up her desk because she could see out the window made a huge difference for me. Absolutely. I love to have a little connection to nature for sure. Feng Shui consultant. Yay, tease. I love it. Well, I will tell y'all. I'm just going to pull it out right now. See, I have my files. I have a lot of red folders. Look, this is my color one. I have a lot of red folders in my for my feng shui career. Lots and lots of red folders. I don't necessarily need red in my office too much because I already kind of high energy. I already have a little too much fire. <laughs> so I need a little bit more grounding. I have a little fire energy in that painting, but there's also other elements represented. We're getting into an element talk, just so you'll know. So the colors represent elements and vice versa. And um, writer and publishing. A little blue goes a long way, Callie. Um, color for real estate developer. Hmm. I want to think about that one. Real estate developer. I love that. I want to think about that. Entrepreneur, someone with multiple job, jobs going on. I mean, I really just want y'all to do what you like. You have favorite colors, right? But I mean, of course, listen to me when I know, tell you my own stuff. It's like, yeah, red is kind of a lucky color in feng shui. So of course, it's a fun color to have in your office to, to, to have that intention, right? To represent it. But if I paint in my office red, don't paint your office red, okay? It's too much energy. It's not, it's too much energy. You won't be able to sit for a long time. So there's all... I like that we're playing this game so I can tell y'all a little more. Like there's a lot of different element things happening besides just like, let me match my office to the color of my career. Like you also have to, um, you have to remember that, that you can't just match it like that. Like there has to be other things going on in your office. I don't, I didn't say that that great, but let me, let's see what else happens. Tell us more about a little blue goes a long way. Well, Callie, for you, I just said it. I think you missed that part. Blue is the color of communication. So writers and publishing, a little blue goes a long way, baby. All right. The real estate developer. So here's the thing, y'all. You don't have to go paint your office red if you want. You know, you can just put like the real estate developer. I don't know why I can't think of what I would want to do for that. I think I might have to have more information. But um, you can have a candle that's red and you light it every day. Like, hey, feng shui consulting, that's my career. Yay. Do, you know, I'm excited for my clients. I'm excited to teach people. I'm excited to learn more. That's the key, honing in what you love. We aren't taught that from the get-go. Is there a cure for doing that? A lot of people my age are in transition. So is there a cure for honing in on what you love? Oh, let's see you ask the good ones, man. Well, I say, and this is borrowed from Abraham Hicks, a mantra to have. I want to know what I want. I want to know what I want. Make it a mantra. If you don't know what you want, just say you want to know what you want. <laughs> it's real. All right. I'm going to ask y'all to unmute and ask a question. Anybody have like a burning question where you're like, Katie? Tell me this, you left this out. Anything? The prosperous office. We didn't even really talk about money that much, but I hope y'all understand that what we talked about, the stability, the support, the command, and the focus, putting your desk in, in, in a space that represents that, that'll apply to any income and any like a wisdom of how to spend money, um, save money, uh, invest it. So what we're looking for is uh, is that relationship with money. Okay. Hey, Katie, how about plants in your office? Okay. Well, what do you want to know? 
Well, um, are they good? Um, are there specific, like, should you avoid pointy kind of plants or do you want flowing plants or I don't know. I'm a plant person. So I could tell you're, is that a screened in porch? Well, it is. I just came out because technically I'm on my lunch break from my, my day job. I and I was it. like, I'm pulling my laptop out to the screened in porch and uh, get some fresh air while I was on this. So I love a screened in porch. I can tell that um, I love that. I almost sat outside today for the call. It's a little too hot for it, but I was like, I'll sit inside. So um, that's a great question. I love plants in a, in a, de in a office because plants represent growth. Okay. And plants are, so the money gua is a wood energy. And the reason for that is because um, plants grow and you want your money to grow. Okay. Now, yes, in feng shui, there are some plants that are friendlier feng shui than others. Okay. So we've got the money tree, which I think Matisse pointed out was in one of the photos today. Um, we have bam lucky bamboo. So easy. Those that take very little maintenance. So the idea is little maintenance, lots of growth. Don't you want your money to be like that? Like just put it somewhere and it just grows. Yay. That's awesome. So um, that's what plants can represent. Um, I would double check what gua you're in as far as how many, um, but in general, plants in a space are lovely. Um, they bring a they are, bring chi because they're alive, they're a life force. And especially if you love plants, it's just like, I mean, they're alive. They are li they are living beings. That is chi. So, um, and I just think greenery has that, you know, it's, you know, the basis of feng shui is we're mimicking nature, right? So we feel better. At, most people, whether you know it or not, maybe it's not conscious, feel better in some sort of natural setting. Well, we want our spaces to mimic that, not necessarily like, you know, bring a whole jungle in our house, but have a balance in our space that that's where the elements come in. The elements are aspects of nature and we have things that symbolize that. So that was a lot. I gave you a lot, but I love the question and I think it was great. And um, I would have put it in my slide and I thought of it because that's how good it was. All right. Let's see who else. I see... Amber saying, what other things can we do in the office to attract career opportunities and or clients and business? Mm -hmm. Okay, so your desk is set up in command. You've got that down. You've organized all your folders and you have blank folders that are ready to put a client's name on it. And um, you might even, if you have like, so in my work, if I go in person, I have a folder with a bunch of things in it. And I go ahead and have those made. I try to have nine at a time because nine is the lucky number in feng shui. Um, make sure you don't have any clutter that represents an old life that represents, um, I don't know, no backup plans. Ooh, that was interesting. <laughs> Just go for it. I'll think more on that one, Amber, but that, that was a little bit more specific to feng shui, but uh, as far as attracting career opportunities and business and clients, what else can you do? I mean, I think for whatever reason, this group, the decluttering and, get, and getting organized and having systems so that when people call, you are ready to accept is just really good. Okay. It's like, I'm ready to answer the call, like uh, opportunities knocking and I'm going to answer. Okay. So make sure your ringer's on. So sometimes we have these mundane cures in feng shui, right? Make sure your ringer's on, <laughs> make sure the doorbell's working. <laughs> Somebody knocks. That's not quite mundane. Some people don't come up the doors as much, but I think this has been fun. I hope some of y'all will sign up for the nine day um, e uh, feng shui and money course. And I hope y'all all read the Swedish artist, Swedish death cleaning. Um, it's, it'll be in the email. I'll send this recording out. I really appreciate y'all being here. Y'all took the time out of your day and I really honor y'all for wanting to live this life of truth and like wanting your energy to be awesome so you can have fun and like have the good life, have that life of fulfillment. Thank y'all so much. I never want to get off these. I'm always like, let me just linger a little more. 
Y'all are the best. I'll see you soon. Okay. Ciao.